Welcome back to our Chess Masters of the Past series. And today we get to see one of the greatest geniuses of all time, Mikhail Tal, perform his magic in the open, Sicilian. Now, when people think of Tal, we think of, ooh, fancy sacrifices. Ooh, bishop takes e6, bishop takes f7. But it was actually the little innocent moves that got him into those magic positions. So we'll see how he tries for these little innocent moves that just improve the position a little by little and eventually get him the sacrifices he needs. A uh, few quick notes before we start. Number one, I got my third International Master Norm, so I'm almost there, hoping to finish up this year, but we'll find out. And also, um, some people asked to do certain openings, like today's opening is a request of Richard. Shout out to Richard. And uh, if you'd like any specific game or opening that you want to analyze, then I'm happy to look at that too. I also set up a donation button. Uh, just if you really, really, really love the work and you really love the videos, feel free to donate. Uh, now, that being said, we start with a Sicilian. And in fact, it's a Richter Rouser classical Sicilian. Tal says, let me get the center. Irvin, his opponent in this game, was a professor from Switzerland and a chess master who played on the Swiss Olympic team. But he wasn't exactly that level of genius. He was still pretty smart, I promise you. That being said, let's see how it went. Knight of three, taking the center. Black says, give me my classical Sicilian. After white fights for the center, black says, you know, you're not the only one who can fight. I can also fight you for e4. If you try for something like take stakes, it just brings more pawns in the middle. Black is always happy to have more pawns nearby. So for that reason, we just defend. Okay, the best way to defend would the knight. Um, at this point, you can also play, you know, e6, d6. I think a6 is a little suspect because after a move like a6, you don't have enough pawns blocking mine. So I can probably take take an e5. So you have to be really careful that I don't get d5 and e5 and which is why people play d6 it stops e5 now we're happy if you take again any sort of pin heh, get out of here i'm not scared of your pins at all because of bishop d7 and after bishop g5 uh there is this move g6 which is a little more rare it, it's hoping to get a dragon um and the other move is e6 which we'll look at today and this one you'll find the most common, okay? Why e6? First of all, we just want to get the bishops out. This is called the Scheveningen bull, okay? If black gets to keep the bishops on e7, d7, put a pawn on, let's say, h6, and a pawn on a6, do you start to see the bull? If your imagination is powerful, then uh, see if you can find the bull in this picture, all right? Here we go. There is your bull. Now, that being said, um, they don't have to go for this. White doesn't have to allow the bull to come out. Instead, Mikhail Tal says, how about I just take your knight? No bulls today. Okay. And if you take with the queen, there's a little problem. I know you want to keep your pawns together, but your c7 square is a sore spot you know it's like ouch that hurts and white can pinch you where it hurts the most on c7 and d6 once you start defending against all these pinches they can keep pinching until they win a pawn because d6 is no longer covered by anyone so for that reason the only way to take back is really pawn takes and this is the start of our uh, richter rouser structure today okay um, now, when you see this pawn structure, you may think, oh, it's scary, it's bad, you can't castle. Eh, not so clear at all. It's actually very, very solid. Now, of course, like everything else in life, it has its problems. For example, this guy's isolated. There's a G file into your house. Your bishops aren't exactly the picture of perfection. But on the other hand, you have bishops. Bishop pair is still bishop pair. And how are they going to break through with the knights? All these central squares are covered. Okay. And if the knights can't approach, then they can't hurt you. If they can't hurt you, you're just going to get your king somewhere safe. Either you castle long, you hide him on a8, b8, 
Or you keep him in the middle and say, why do I need to castle at all once I have all these moves in? Okay, Black will get all the pieces out, start firing at you, and then the White King, on the other hand, may get in trouble when the Bishop pair comes for him. Okay, bad boy, bad boy, what you're going to do when the Bishop pair comes for you? And so the bad boy decides to castle before anything but happens. Uh, A6 and F4. Okay, here comes F5. Typical treatment of the structure is actually something like pawn f5, the other knight can often go here. Uh, very often you'll see the queen swing around to h3 to say hi to this pawn, okay? Um, and then we're trying to say go up. If we can get this pawn to move, we're very happy. Okay, for example, let's just play a sample line here. Let's say for some reason they decide to be generous and push us away. That's very generous because they donate the d5 square to our foundation, okay? Once the knight sticks himself on d5 with his brother around the corner, good luck covering all the holes. If you thought the pinches were bad earlier, oh boy, pinch, pinch, pinch everywhere. You're going to regret ever playing d5. For that reason, usually black goes to ignore the pawn and says, thanks for the outpost you provided. You're the one who donated a square to me. And if you take, okay, I undouble my pawns and I'll try to get out of here as soon as I can, okay? But that's on the agenda. That's on the horizon, okay? It may happen. In the actual game, Black gets the counterattack ready. So far, so good. And Tal says, hey, don't, don't worry about me. Very innocently taking out a bishop, right? It's one of those innocent moves that you really have to watch out for. Because if Tal is playing them, you should be horrified. You should be like, ah, Bishop E2! Why is it so scary? See if you can figure it out for yourself. Guess where the bishop is going. If you guessed H5, you're totally right. After H5, it's not only blocking your one bad pawn. It's also saying hi to the king. Also saying F5, breaking through the light squares, and then knight E6. For example, let's... Do a sample line here. Bishop h5, hello to the king. They are ignoring us at their peril. After f5, knight e6, it's almost game over. You can't survive this assault on the light squares. Very soon, I'm smelling queen e2, bishop takes, queen's, uh, queen coming in, knight d5, queen g6 mate. No way the king is surviving. So in this system for black, black has to be real careful with the king who's a little late to the party, late to the castle, okay? So you have to really watch out for him if you're going to play this as black. As for white, the king is safe, and we say, okay, let's go attack. Let's see how Tal does it. Brings out the bishop, and Irvin's smart. Irvin sees everything, even the innocent moves. Blocks the bishop from coming in. That's a healthy idea, because anyways, we'll, we'll want to file later on. And if we get, get something like h4, h3, rook g8, and say hi to this pawn, this guy is called backwards, actually backwards Gary in this case. Okay, backwards Gary pawn is not going to be a happy g pawn. All right, that's what he wants. Will he get it? Let's see. King b1, always a safe move. Get the king out of the way. Do you want to deal with the bishop pin? No, just get out of the way as soon as you can. What do they want? Hmm. Tal looks at the queen and says, ah, you want to trade. You want to take, 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 take. And after all that, you got the bishop pair. And the end game is solid for black. It's hard to create any pass pawns. And the bad pawns will be compensated by black's bishops. Okay. So that being said, knight runs away to avoid the trade and castle long. Irvin says, against world champions and against Tal's in particular, we castle. Okay, and then we think later. So Tal says, mm, what's my sleeping beauty? Mm, working, 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 working. Mm, mm, rook f1 right away. Gets ready for f5, gets ready for rook lifts. Makes sense? Bishop e7 covers everything in advance and connects the rooks. And we're done our opening. At the end of the opening, I think both sides are happy. Black got the setup, but also white got the setup he wants to. And black may have a target, because now the rook is tied down to h5. 
not a big deal. Maybe you can fix that, but Y can say slightly better for now. Okay. A rook comes in. One of those innocent moves. Tal says, I'm not gonna hurt anyone. I'm just I'm just coming in. Don't worry. I'm just I'm just checking the sides. I'm just a tourist. No, he's not. He's an evil chess player coming for h5, also coming for f7, and also coming for the d file. Okay. After rook g8, we overprotect. Tal says, I don't want anything to do with g2 falling. If this pawn falls, everything else falls. So it's a key pawn. King runs away because at some point he may want this file too. He's already covered that one. Maybe he'll want this one. Okay. Tal says, you don't give me this file. I'll take that file. At some point, he's already smelling the sacrifices. I can, I can imagine him being like, mm, Rook takes d6. I'll destroy your pawn cover, bring in a knight soon, get your bishop and eat everything. So this is already in the air. And Irvin says, get away from my D pawn. If you take it now, it's not as bad because the king just runs and you don't lose the bishop. Okay. Tal says, okay, let's stop any knight before. So at some point, I want a window. So just in case, a very healthy move. Very innocent, right? And well, you'll see how innocent it is. H4. Uh, this is useful. This is just a useful move. At some point, the rook wants to come in. You know, at some point you want to say hi to this guy. So he has a hard time playing g3. White doesn't want to babysit g2. He kind of has to babysit g2. Okay. So Ervin says, ha ha, you're a baby forever. Okay. And Tal says, fine, then you're a baby forever. And makes a very innocent move. Yeah, just looking at a pawn, doubling up the rooks. No, no, not going to hurt anyone. Or is he? At this point, I want to ask what you would do. Take three seconds, you can pause the video, and guess what's the right approach for white? Or at least the most ambitious approach. Ready? Three, two, one. And if you guess knight d5, you're a genius like Tal. Congrats on finding knight d5. Kaboom! Destroying that brick of a pawn structure. Once we destroy the brick, everything else will disappear too. We can get closer and closer to you with this nice little fork. Okay, why is the fork so good? Because if they go back, let's try it out. Boom, 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 boom. Okay, we take on d6 with the rooks coming in up an extra pawn. Your bishop's awful, game over. This is like winning, even after Rook takes f4, bishop takes a6, pawn takes, rook takes knight, and I would really like white with such a lousy king. Okay? For that reason, Irvin says, no, 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 I'll take. And what are you doing here? Why are you giving me free knights? Oh, because you want my bishop. Uh huh. Well, if I go back, you invade and ruin my structure. So what if we just stick something on e5? How about that? Once you take me, I get to on double pawns. And now my structure is fixed. Okay, the bishops may come out soon. The pawns are coming. We have a protected pastor. Life is looking good for black for now. Black's pieces are pretty active. Up to this point, he actually played pretty well. Here come the mistakes, though. Okay. At this point, Tal starts to play those, you know, innocent moves. They're just, you know, just checking the sides. Just a scout. The scout knight is coming in just to say hi. Okay. And the scout is also eyeing b7. So in many cases, we have forks in the air. If this uh, pawn is pinned, it doesn't exist. Then that right there is a fork. Okay. Urban says, leave me alone. Go away from here. I'll take your knight if you let me. And now more tactics. Irvin just couldn't contain Tal's tactics. He was just jumping out of Tal. Let's see how it's going to work here. Boom. So far, not the end of the world. It's a fork. And he's saying, please take. So I can say hello to everyone all at once with a pin. Pin and win. All he should have done. It's just run away. If he runs away, life goes on. Instead, he takes this knight. 
He should have just ran away with the queen, ran away with the king, ignored the knight, let him live there. But it's so hard letting a horse stay in your house. Okay, don't you just want to get rid of it? And that's what he does. But after he removes the knight, it's no longer so good for us. Okay, in the game, he went for taking the sacrifice. And after rook takes c6, queen ran away, and here comes the magic of Tal. Okay, rook starts collecting pawns. So far, we're down a knight. But how many pawns? One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four, five, six. Two pawns for a bishop, I should say, and an open king. Even this is not the end of the world, but it's starting to look shady, a little suspect, so to say. All right. And this is just the beginning. Okay. Irvin brings in more friends. Yeah. He's probably not calculating. He's just saying, okay, my rook will help the pawn. A little awkward on a4, not the best defender, overprotect. This move is not even innocent. It's just saying, I will come and mate you. It's very blatant. Okay, bishop c7 makes some sense. Yeah, he says, Why don't I just get rid of your attackers? Yeah, okay, rook comes for more targets. If you give me three pawns, I'll take three pawns. If you give me a queen, I'll take the queen. If you let me promote, I'll promote. Okay, bishop has to run away and rook to c6. e4, trying for counterplay. It's very hard to find moves for black here because most moves are starting to look bad. Rook b3 on horizon. And the staircase pattern is going to be annoying, to say the least. Okay. So Irvin says, fine, just let me get a pawn somewhere, or maybe, I don't know, get, get some play, but it doesn't really help. Rook to b3. And he has to go for tactics already. You know it's sad if normal moves are starting to lose. For example, here's a normal move, right? Defending the bishop, running away from the rook. Makes sense? No. Loose pieces drop off. LPDO, loose pieces like that guy and this guy are dropping off like apples from a tree. Okay. And now the game is almost over. There is not much Irvin can do with this open king. He has to go for tactics, but tactics don't work when your position said you're going for it from a position of weakness. Okay. Uh, tactics don't work when your pieces are all over the place, like jumbled, like paint on an open canvas. Like, what is the rook doing here? What is the rook doing there? It's a mess. Whereas white's pieces are all, you know, working as a team, like they should be. Okay, so Irvin has to go for tactics. Style just laughs it off and says, what tactics? I'm not going to trade queens. You think I'm going to trade queens? No, I'm just going to play an innocent little queen e3. Don't worry, I'm just blocking your pawn. I don't want anything from you. I'm just kicking your queen, and that's it. And blocking your pawn. Don't worry about it. Go boom! Out of nowhere comes another blow. Queen h6, after all that innocence, finishes the game. What's going on here? Why are we giving up queens? Because back rank is falling. Okay, rook takes checkmate coming very soon. Okay, and if you don't take the queen, like what happened in the game, he had to run away and we collect. Now it's time to collect the harvest. Let's go collect the harvest, say hi to the bishop. If they take it's game over with the queen there, all right. And if they try for more tactics, they go for some desperado. They're hoping for a queen trade, right? So maybe if we take, then they take, and, you know, it's something. They hope to trade off some attackers and survive, but no, we keep the queens on at all costs. Too many things are hanging. The rook is hanging, the bishop's hanging, and very soon the king will be hanging, okay? After queen d7, they try to protect everything, but just collect. And he resigned because... He knew the checkmate was coming with the king hanging. Rook takes back. If rook took back, then we'd have check, takes, check, blocks, check, collects, and mate. The king was way too open. So as you can see in this opening, black never gets a real safe king. 
Okay, with the knight coming here, you can't keep a safe king with Mikhail Tal. Okay, um, he could have defended a little better, but just not touching and not destroying his pawns. The second the pawns were destroyed, it was game over. Okay, and out of the opening, Black was doing all right with those bishop pairs. You know, Black was surviving at least, but I think he should have probably stopped the um, knight d5 blow. Okay, you have to watch out for knight d5s and f5s at all times. Otherwise, he played really, really well. It's just, it's hard to play the magician from Riga. Thanks for watching, and until next time, bye bye.